Welcome once again to this session of Maths with EJD. I have been going on talking about matrices. And in this video, our focus is on matrix properties. And under that, I'll be talking about properties of matrices like traces, the trace of a matrix, the transpose of a matrix, the determinant of a matrix. And of course, because I don't want to keep this video too long, I'll be talking about inverse in the next video. And in fact, in other videos down the line, I'll be talking about inverse because there are different methods for dealing with inverses. So um, I'll be talking about, I'll, I'll make a couple of videos just treating inverse alone, uh, talking about the different methods. So are you ready to go on this, right? Yes. So let's talk about the trace of a matrix. Sorry, I keep uh, you know, <laughs> interchanging this matrix and matrix, but I think it's matrix actually. So I'll get used to it. I call it matrix for, for the major part of my life. So matrix, the trace of a matrix. First of all, you need to understand that the trace of a matrix is only defined for square matrices. So if a matrix is triangle uh, is a is rectangular, that is, the number of rows are not equal to the number of columns, then uh, you cannot find the trace of such a matrix. Very important to note. Then you should also understand that the trace of a square matrix is the sum of its principal diagonal elements. In the pre in a previous class, I think I've told you that the principal diagonal uh, elements are the elements running from running from 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, 3, down like that. So this is the principal diagonal uh, consisting of elements whose uh, row number is also equal to the column number. So that's the principal diagonal. So when you add up the elements on the principal diagonal of a square matrix, you get the trace. And that is why the trace of this matrix A, which is A11, A12, A13, and so on, is actually given as trace A equals A11 plus A22 plus A33. So that's the idea of trace. And of course, for examples, if you have B1 minus 11, 2, 7, then the trace of B would be 1 plus 7. That is, those are the numbers you have on the principal diagonal, and then you get it. So it means the trace of this matrix is actually 8. Then if we have this, if you go for this 4 by 4 matrix, C, which 3, 7, 1, 4, 2, minus 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 6, 0, 1, 2, 3, 1. Of course, the trace will be 3 plus minus 1 plus 6 plus 1. And that is 3 minus 1 plus 6 plus 1. And the result there is 9. That is the trace of a matrix. Very simple. So basically, you need to understand that all these things we've been learning about, they have practical applications in our day-to-day -day lives. For instance, the trace of a density matrix. Density matrix is actually a fundamental idea in quantum mechanics. So the trace of a density matrix provides information about the system's purity and coherence. So, I mean, if you find yourself doing quantum mechanics one day, uh, you might uh, come across the idea of trace, which is pretty useful in that place. So trace is that simple, so we don't have to spend too much time on it. So we move on to another very interesting concept, which is transpose. The transpose of a matrix um, is such that it is applicable to every matrix. So, you know, trace was only, uh, could only, you can only find the trace of, it, of a square matrix, but for transpose, every matrix can be transposed. Every matrix has a transpose, okay? So, and simply the transpose of a matrix involves switching its rows and columns. So basically what you're doing when you transpose a matrix is to change the rows to the columns, change the elements on the rows to the columns and the elements on the columns to the rows. So meaning that row one becomes column one, row two becomes column two and all that. So that is basically what happens when you transpose a matrix. So uh, the property, this property called transpose is denoted by A raised power A power A, power t or a prime where a is the original matrix so if you have the original matrix to be a the transpose of a will be a transpose or if you like a prime so when you see a transpose 
or A prime. You know, you're talking about the transpose of matrix A. All right. So look at this. For A, which is actually a two by three matrix, A11, A12, A13, A21, A22, A33. So when you transpose this, so since it's a two by three matrix, when you transpose it, it automatically become a three by two matrix because you are switching the rows for the columns and the columns for the rows. So for instance, the first row here, A11, A12, A13, becomes the first column in the transpose. The second column, A21, A22, A23, becomes the second column. So, and that is the idea of transpose. So let's take two examples and move on because it's really a simple idea. Okay, so if you have a matrix B, which is one minus 11, two, seven, then B transpose would be column one, which is one, two, becomes row one here. And then column two minus 11, seven becomes row two in the transpose. And that's just it. Then again, if we take a matrix C, if we take C, which is 3, 7, 1, 4, 2, minus 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 6, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1. When you transpose that, the first column, 3, 2, 4, 1, becomes the first row in the transpose. The second column, which is 7 minus 1, 3, 2, becomes the second row in the transpose. Then the third column, the third column in, the, in C, becomes the third row in the transpose. And lastly, 4201, which is the fourth column, becomes the fourth row in the transpose. And that is basically the idea of a transpose. Now, one thing you should understand is that the idea of a lot of matrix principles are used in, in, in computing, especially when it, talks, when it comes to graphics and you know handling uh, pictures, videos, and things like that. Um, when you talk about pixels and all that, so it's a lot of matrix going on right there. So for instance, transpose operation is applied in computer graphics, particularly in transformations and rendering. You know, uh, you know, you, when you, you can take a picture and then you can switch it over, you know, the left becomes right and right becomes left. When you do that, you should know that an idea uh, coming from, uh, the idea of transpose is at play right there. Okay, so that's all about transpose for now and then we move on to a very important concept still a very important property of a matrix which is the determinant of a matrix as the word uh, signifies it, it's a determinant so it determines the behavior of the matrix if you want to look at, at it like that and again just like uh, trace the determinant of a matrix is only applicable it is only applicable to square matrices only applicable to square matrices. So it means you cannot find the determinant of a matrix that is uh, whose rows and columns are, are not the, uh, the, whose number of rows and columns are not the same, you know? So, and again, the determinant of a square matrix can be regarded as the magnitude of the matrix. So, you know, when you talk about vectors and scalar quantities, right? You say a, uh, a, a vector quantity, a scalar quantity is only magnitude, right? But a vector quantity has magnitude and direction. So actually, if you remember, a row matrix, a column matrix can be referred to as a vector, right? So it means that matrices generally can be seen as some kind of vector quantities. But if you want to find the, the scalar, the magnitude of that vector quantity called a matrix, that is what the determinant represents. Okay, so... You can also regard the determinant of a matrix as the scaling factor of the matrix in a linear transformation. For instance, the determinant of a two by two matrix, you know, uh, when, you talk, when you talk about length, you know, and um, length, if you multiply length by length, that's the idea of a two by two matrix. When you multiply length by length, you are talking about area, right? And since we said that the magnitude can be regarded as a scaling factor of the matrix in a linear transformation, that means that the determinant of a two by two matrix represents the scaling factor of an area transformation. So two by two matrix, area transformation. So the magnitude of a two by two matrix will be the scaling factor. For instance, if you get a negative magnitude, that means that in an area transformation, the the, the area is going to shrink if the ma magnitude is negative. But if it is positive, it means it's more like, uh, uh, you know, when you are playing music, 
you can you can speed it up you know or you can slow it down something like that so whatever you get from the determinant is actually a scaling uh it determines um what happens when you are transforming and on the other hand for a three by three matrix you know now we are talking about length times length times length which is not like volume so for a three by three matrix uh the magnitude the determinant is the scaling factor of a volume transformation so if the determinant of a three by three matrix is positive that means the volume will increase when there's a transformation in the volume or it will, if the determinant is negative the volume will reduce you know so you can see how important that is already so determinants are helpful for finding matrix inverse in matrix inverse or we can say matrix inverses right which is important for solving systems of linear equations so along the line we'll be talking about how to use how to solve systems of linear equations using uh ideas of the uh, from determinants inverses and things like that so and one thing you, you can know up front is that um any matrix who do, whose determinant is zero cannot uh I mean, you cannot find the inverse. And once you can't find the inverse, you will likely not be able to solve the problem. Of course, there are all kinds of methods that have been developed to handle some of these things, but we see all of this as we progress. So determinants are helpful for finding matrix inverses. And if you can find the inverse of a matrix, you can actually solve, uh, use, use that idea in solving systems of linear equations. Okay. And we move on to the next part where we take actual example okay well these these are like generalizations for each for two by two and three by three matrices we already know that determinants only apply to uh to square matrices so for a two by two matrix right you have a11 a12 a21 a22 the determinants can be given as this you know this is the symbol you, you have this a caged in two uh stand upright uh lines and then um you multiply the blue line a11 times a22 this minus a12 times a21 and once you do that that is the determinant of that matrix so this is just a generalization we are going to see examples with actual numbers now when you get to 3 by 3 matrix it becomes a bit more uh, tasking but of course it's not uh, beyond us so for a 3 by 3 matrix say b is Okay, normally I should actually call this B11, B12, and all that. But I mean, you understand that, um, okay, I could as well just call it A, right? Since those elements are A. So let's say this is A, and let's say this is the determinant of A, right? So since I said B, I should say B11, B12, and all that. So let's assume it's A. So, and you have all those elements as stated. To find the determinant for a three by three matrix, you, you need to apply something extra. And here you are going to talk, be, begin to talk about uh, the signs of the elements of a matrix. How do you determine the sign of the elements of a matrix? Now, to, design, to, to determine the signs of the elements of a matrix, see what I'm going to do here. So you, are, you have to take, uh, so you take minus one, you know, just take minus one, raised to the power of the row number plus the column number. That means that the element at row one, column one would, so the sign attached to it. So for A11, the sign attached would be minus one raised by one plus one because row one, column one uh, is one, one, right? So you have minus one raised by one plus one, which is minus one raised to power two. And once the power is positive, then the sign will be, so the final result will be plus one. So the sign attached to the, to the element in row one, column one, would be plus one. I mean, it would be plus, right? It would be plus. The sign attached is plus. And then what if you go to the second, the next element, that is uh, for A12, right? For A12. So the sign attached to it will be minus one raised power. Row is one column is two and that is equal to minus one raised to power one plus two that's three and that is equal to minus one times minus one times minus one is simply minus one so the sign attached to that element will be minus and you know that's very important minus is that is the sign attached to it so i mean you don't have to do this every time you just know that just know that the first one 
is one one so that's plus and once it is plus it will keep alternating so it will alternate upwards i mean to uh, to alternate to the right and downwards so you have plus minus plus for the top and then since you have plus minus plus there so it means that this one is going to be minus plus minus and down here would be plus minus plus that means plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus so if you come vertical uh, along the columns so you have plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus plus so you don't have to worry but i mean i just did this explanation to show you where the sign is coming from so it is minus one raised to the power of the row the number of row plus number of, the position of the row and the position of the column and once the power is odd the sign attached is negative once the power is even, the sign attached is positive. So that's really important here. But then in doing determinant, you only need the sign of you only you only need the sign at the very top. Or I mean any column you choose, right? You only need that sign. So you don't need more than uh okay, let me return that. Yeah. So you only need one row or one column for what we have to do. But I mean, I, I recommend you always use the first row for what you want to do. So to find the determinant, you know, in two by two, we just multiplied uh, A11 and A22, and we, and we just said that minus A12 times A21, and that was easy. But here, because we have a three by three matrix, things become a bit more complicated. So that's why the signs now are important. So what you're going to do here is you take the first element, which is, a11, and you know the sign attached to it is plus, so that's why I said plus A11. And then, now that you have plus A11, then you have to cross out the column to which it belongs and the row to which it belongs. Whatever is left, which is this, A22, A23, A32, A33, that's, you have that as a two by two determinant. So it's more like a two by two determinant. So, and that's how you get this. Now that that is taken care of, right? So you go to the next one. So you go to the next one and then it's you have A12. So you have minus A12, minus A12, and then you cross out the column to which A12 belongs and the row to which it belongs. And then what you have left to be A1, A21, A23, A31, A33. And that is what you have as a two by two uh, determinant down here. Then of course, we can reverse that two, and then you have uh, A13 plus A13 because plus is the sign attached to it. So you cross out that column and you cross out the row to which A13 belongs. So, and you have a two by two determinant, A21, A22, A31, A32, like that. And once that is settled, things become a bit easier. And then you, you now come here. So you have plus A11, that's just simply A11. And then for this determinant, it's a two by two thing. Now. So you just go ahead and do what we did with two by two matrices. So for this, you have A22 times A33 minus A23 minus A32. I mean, A23 times A32. And then the next one, you have minus A12 into A21, A21, A33 minus A23, A31. Of course, uh, lastly, you have plus A13 into A21, A32 minus a22 a31 and that is how you find the terminal but this is just like a generalization so let's do some specific examples so we can drive the point home um okay so you have this now um want to deal with this you have matrix a two three one minus five so the determinant is simply you know, of course, just for sign two, you, you have that st st uh, standing bars to show that you're now looking for determinants, two, three, one, minus five. And that's simply two times minus five minus three times one. So two times one five minus three times one. That's two times one is five minus 10. Three times one is three. So minus 10 minus three, that's minus 13. That'll be the determinant for that matrix. And then for matrix B, two, three, zero, one, minus five, four, two, seven, minus one. So then you go ahead, determinant of B is, is the determinant of 2, 3, 0, 1, minus 5, 4, 2, 7, minus 1. And again, just like I said before, plus is the sign attached to this, minus is attached to this, plus is attached to this. So it means you have plus 2 here, minus 3 here, and plus 0 here. And uh, to do, so for plus 2, right, let me get something not so thick. So you cross out this row 
I mean, this column and this row, and you have minus five, four, seven minus one. That's what you have in this cage. All right. And then you go to minus three. So you cross out the column to which it belongs and the row to which it belongs. So what do you have left? One, four, two minus one. That's what you keep here. All right. And lastly, well, anytime I'm doing uh, determinant and I see zero, I'm happy because whatever it is, it is going to end up being zero. But I mean, for the sake of it, we just go ahead. So you have plus zero. Then you cross the column to which it belongs and the row to which it belongs. What you have left is one minus five, two, seven here, you know. And once that is done, your, the way is a bit clear and then you can move on. So you have two out here. The minus five times minus one, that's just five. Because minus times minus is plus, five times one is five. Then minus, the, you know, there's a normal minus there. Then seven times four, that's 28. Then we go ahead, minus three. So one times minus one is minus one. Then minus four times two, that's eight. Plus zero, one times seven, seven. Minus, right? Minus five times two is minus 10. But there's supposed to be a minus there. So that's why that's seven minus minus 10. And that is why you end up having seven plus 10. Now that that is done, things are a bit easier. So you have two into five minus 28, that's minus 23. Minus three into minus one minus eight, that's minus nine. Plus zero into seven plus 10, that's 17. And then two times minus three, minus 23 is minus 46. Minus three times minus nine is plus 27. Then zero times 17 is zero. So if you add all of that up, your result is minus 19. And that is how you get the determinant of that matrix. So with that, we come to the last slide, which is some work for you. And you know, teachers are fond of doing the simple examples and giving you the hard exercise. So I have some questions for you. Most of them not as difficult, but one of them <laughs> can be an issue. So um, so given matrices F, you know, 3, 1, 1, 2, 4, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, G, uh, you know, this is a 3 by this is a three by three matrix, three by three matrix. The first one, F, G is a three by two matrix. Then uh, this is a two by two matrix. And interestingly, this is a four by four matrix. I did not do the determinant of a four by four matrix. So you can imagine if you have to do that, you have to go, you know, you start with, you know, this is plus, minus, plus, minus, and then you do plus two and you cross, you cross this and this, you get a three by three matrix and then you do zero and you cross and you do all of that trouble. And then, you know, all just three by three again, you now go ahead and do, uh, you, so here, of course, you know, this will be plus minus plus again. So you do plus one, cross this and cross this and you have four, six. So that's like a multi-layer kind of thing. So I, I give you the difficult trouble <laughs> problem to solve, you know, so you can actually sharpen your skills. So given all these matrices, F, G, I, and H, you are required to find the traces, the transposes, and determinants where possible. You already know that traces and determinants can only be found for square matrices, but then you can find the transpose of every kind of matrix. So right there, you have your, you know, which ones to, whose traces and determinants you can find and the ones, and of course, all of them, you can find the transposes. So thank you so much for listening. Um, it's been such a nice time doing this. And just like I keep saying, uh, if you have, questions you can drop them in the comment section if there are things i need to do to make uh what i do better like maybe there's something i do that is that's making it diffi more difficult for you uh, let me know so i can adjust and get things working better see you in the next video where i talk about the inverses of matrices thank you